So today we're going to talk about a subject that's fascinating to you and to me, I'm sure, and it's the subject and topic of taxes. Okay, so while I know a lot of people say, oh my goodness, taxes, sadly or fortunately, it is a important part of financial planning because it affects every financial decision we make. Why is it so important? Because it affects our finances today and affects our finances in the future, right, Jason? So they affect both pre present and future income streams. Okay, that's one one issue to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can't really control tax rates. Okay, tax rates change um, with every administration. Every year they could change for mm -hmm. that matter. So why is this important? Again, because the higher taxes, less net income. Mm -hmm. And when we do planning, we should focus on net, right? So it's one of those things where planning needs to be visited. We talked about that in financial planning because as taxes change, that could change your financial plan. That's right. Okay, but you know, where, what are some typical or the major types of taxes? There's federal income tax, there's state and local tax, which some people refer as SALT, Okay, and we'll look at that in a second. Payroll tax, capital gains tax, and tax on dividends. So let's get into that a little bit, Jason. Jason, talk to us a little bit about federal income tax, how it's broken down. Yeah, it's what's called a pro progressive tax rate system, which means the more money you make, the, the higher percentage that you pay. Right. So you can see here on the bottom right of the screen, it just kind of gives you two main categories. We're actually technically three, but most people fall into either the unmarried or the married category. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the different tax rates that you pay based off of the income that you're at at that point. Now, so this is based on 2020 tax table. This is true, yeah. yeah. These will adjust each year a lot of times. But so for just a quick example, Example: If you're unmarried, the first um, $9,875 you make is taxed at 10%, and then the next 900 or the next amount of money from $9,876 to $40,000 approximately is at 12%. And you can see it goes further and further on, where you pay 22%, 24%, and then at over $518,000 you're paying 37%. So that's important, as Paul was saying, to look at what your net, uh, you know, net, net actual income is, mm -hmm. because if you're making a million dollars a year, then you're you're only bringing home, you know, give or take, you know, six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And that's important. You know, that's not an exact calculation, right. but understand this: it's there's what's called a marginal tax rate. On that table, it says the first is at this rate, the next is at this rate. Right. So it's not that all of it becomes that's at the right. higher rate. Yep. It's res so respectively at different rates, that's right. um, certain brackets. So what happens is when you calculate all that, that gives you a net tax liability, okay? Mm -hmm. And then if you divide that by your gross income, that gives you what's called your effective tax rate, right. which will be a blend of these, yeah. which might be like 25%, uh, which yeah. you won't see on the table, but it's the math blend of all right. these. What are areas that are typically taxable? Your earnings, okay? Uh, a portion of Social Security benefits could be taxable, mm -hmm. pension income, uh, rental or passive income, and interest and dividends, uh, specifically non-qualified. That's right. And it's important to know too, and we're not going to get deep into this, but just to understand that certain th earnings, like, you know, or certain things that you take maybe from like an IRA, if you took money out of your IRA, mm -hmm. that's considered income tax, which could right. put you further down these tax brackets. That's right. Um, and, and make you pay a higher um, tax rate. So it's important to consider these things, especially when you're looking at maybe even Social Security benefits, right. um, how much of that is taxable, which is a whole different scale. Uh, but it's important. Uh, to consider these things when you're making financial decisions because a lot of people just look at it from the the gross amount right and they're not looking at it from the net amount but right. with anything we believe as financial planners you look at the net of course amount yeah we ask people what do you take home what do you net right because oh I make a hundred thousand dollars well that's your supposed compensation package but you can't count on all that money that's right? right so we look at the net so that's federal taxes another one that we want to talk about is state and local now this is an interesting one again known as salt it's typically done on a state by state basis okay uh, includes income tax property tax sales tax okay uh, people don't realize when you buy property is usually something called real estate tax mm -hmm. okay associated with that now not all states have a state tax okay mm -hmm. so if you see on the picture there's states these are the states with no income tax currently right. so you, you you won't be surprised that some people athletes etc mm -hmm. might move to states with no income tax That's so they right. can save on tax savings so that would be their residence even though they travel all over the place right if you do live in a state with state income tax, they may be deductible from your federal tax mm -hmm. return as well. So they kind of work in hand. It's not you have to pay here and there mm -hmm. typically. Yep. Okay. So you want to also consider if you do live in a state with state income tax, 
what are the impact of that? Yep. Uh, New York has a lot of state income tax, so what does that mean for your bottom line number? That's right. I mean, certain things, certain decisions that you make, whether you contribute to certain retirement accounts may affect that, um, and you may get an extra deduction if, it's a, if, if it has a state with income tax. That's exactly too, right. So. With 529s, we talked about all that, yep. you might get a deduction if you have a you know, mm -hmm. state income tax. So there's federal, there's state, there's also something called payroll tax, and this one you're probably very familiar with. Right. So, you know, when you look at your paycheck, there's always things called, you know, FUDA, SUDA, Mm -hmm. All the UDAs we call them, okay? Yep. And what that is, is the different taxes that are just automatically withdrawn from your paycheck. Mm -hmm. There's federal tax, okay? If you have state tax, those are withdrawn, but there's also a few others that are called Social Security, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and this is withheld typically the, the reason for retirement and disability benefits. Um, there's Medicare, okay, withheld for healthcare and retirement. And then there's self employment, uh, which Depending if you're self-employed, you may have to send it yourself, right. okay? But these are the typical other taxes that you see coming out of your paycheck that people say, whoa, you know, that adds up when you got your federal tax, if you have state, then you've got, you know, Social Security, Medicare, if you're self-employed, self-employment tax. Again, another reason why it's so critical to take tax into account when doing financial planning. And then another one that ha is more specific, that those are income tax related, mm -hmm. but then there's one that's more investment related and people don't take this into account. When they do self-invest, you know, these self-investors that they mm -hmm. start trading in, and that's been a hot topic as of recording this video, yeah. made a lot of money last year in these brokerage accounts and they realized, oh my goodness, I have to pay capital gains tax. Yeah, and at your in income tax rate, you know, for the short-term capital gains, which means, you know, depending on how much short-term gains you had for the year, mm -hmm. you could be paying a huge percentage. That's know, right. 35 so, plus percent. Yeah. So capital gains in its generic definition is basically what you sold mm -hmm minus what you bought, that's right. okay, which is called your cost basis, right. that difference is called capital gains. Mm -hmm. And that's taxed typically in one of two ways. As you just finished mentioning, there's short-term capital mm -hmm. gains and long-term capital gains, right? Yep. So short-term is if you hold, if you profited on the sale of an asset within a year, right? right? So if you sold that asset in less than a year, that's a short-term capital gain, and that gets taxed at your ordinary income tax, which is the, the scale that you showed earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Right? But then if you sell something that you've held on for longer than a year, that's typically categorized as long-term capital gains, and that has a separate gains table, mm -hmm. if you will. You see the, 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 the table here, it says, you know, 0, 0.15 as of today's law, mm -hmm. 0, 0.15 and 20%. So something that's interesting to note here is that the, the ordinary income tax went up into the 30s mm -hmm. as far as percentage, right. where as of today, the capital gains tax is capped at 20. Mm -hmm. So if you get to choose which tax rate, right. okay, you obviously want to choose capital gains because most likely it'll that's be right. lower than if you were taxed at income, income tax rate. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And, and another thing to think about here that lot, not a lot of people realize is that you know, if you are a low income earner, let's say you retire, you know, and you don't have a huge amount of income, then there's a chance from a long-term capital gains perspective that you're in the zero ta tax bracket That's in right. terms of capital gains rates if you're making below 80000 if you're married or making below 40000 if you're married at the time in this recording. That's so, exactly right. You know, not a lot of people think about that. That that could save them a lot of money if they don't make, if they don't earn a lot and have a lot of income, That's right. they don't have to pay as much. I mean, that's a huge difference, again, the importance of understanding a little bit about yep. taxes and taking them into account when planning strategies, how I take distributions, where I invest my money, right. all that comes into play because taxes can have a significant impact on your future earnings. That's right. And one other thing I want to point out here is sometimes you'll see on your brokerage statements, if it's a, if it's a non-retirement type of brokerage statement, they'll have unrealized gains oh, yes. and realized gains. And just to clarify that, an unrealized gain is is a investment that you have not yet sold, right. that you're still holding on to. And so sometimes you'll see an unrealized gain or loss, but that doesn't factor in your taxes for that year. It's the realized gain. So for example, loss. if you bought an investment at 10, you put $10,000 into a stock, and today it's worth 15,000, right. right? But you haven't sold it. Yep. You have an unrealized gain of $5,000, yep. right? That's so right. No tax effect right now. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's versus realized gain, which is I sold it I sold for it. fifteen. Now I realize yeah. that five thousand. Right. Now and it that's becomes when taxable. It matters. Okay. Very yeah. good. Okay. So exactly. something else that's important to understand is tax deductions, exclusions, and credits. And this, you know, getting into the weeds on taxes here, and I apologize for you know going on and about. It. You see how important this is. A tax deduction is the amount that's subtracted from income 
before tax is calculated, mm -hmm. okay? So for example, you see the example there. If I have an annual income of $100,000, okay, and I, we get, as of, the, as of the recording, there's a $24,000 deduction mm -hmm. if you file married joint, okay? So what that means is my adjusted gross income, you take the 100, subtract the $24,000 deduction that the IRS gives me, and my adjusted gross income is 76,000. Now we have a new number of which starts calculating the tax right. rate, yep. okay? So that standard deduction, typically is used when you're trying to determine, do I take the standard deduction, which again, as of this recording, married is 24,000, individual mm -hmm. is 12, or do I itemize? Itemize is, oh, let me save my receipts, yeah. let me you know, deduct my property tax, all that. Well, the only time it typically makes sense to itemize is if it's gonna be higher than your standard deduction, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. A few years ago, the tax laws changed. Most Americans are not deducting, uh, uh, itemizing rather, right. because the dedu deduction is sufficient. Yeah, it's around, statistics say around uh, over 90% of the population is standardizing, yeah, takes a standard deduction. That's exactly mm -hmm. right, okay? Then there's something else called the exclusion. An exclusion, the amount is exempt from being reported as income. Uh, typically life insurance proceeds, child support, welfare as of the laws of this recording, okay? And then there's a credit, a tax credit. A credit is directly applied to your liability. So for example, that would lower your tax bill dollar for dollar. Before you saw a deduction takes it away from your income right. and the rest gets taxed. This said a credit, if you owe 5,000 in taxes and you get a credit mm -hmm. for 2,000, that just lowered your tax bill by 2,000. So is that where the child tax credit would come? That's to exactly play? right. That's a, it's a direct, it's usually the best case scenario. Right. T credits are better than deductions yep. typically. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So why are all these things important? I know it's a little tedious, okay, but tax rates are subject to change. It's something we can't control, but you try to control all the other elements around it when it comes to investing and making financial decisions, okay? The higher the income, the more taxes you pay. You may say that stinks, okay? Right. Some people say, oh, I don't want to pay taxes. Yeah, but flip side, you're making more money. So, you know, don't not make more money right. <laughs> to pay less in taxes. And again, you're looking at what is the net that right. you're bringing home. So even if you do pay more in ta taxes, right. you still have a higher net. A lot That's of exactly right. So plan based on the net, not on the gross, and then if you have an understanding of this, you want to explore different strategies mm -hmm. that make sense when it comes to financial planning and reducing your tax yeah. bill. We call that tax minimization strategies. Right. And you can, you can minimize taxes now, or right. you can look to minimize taxes in the future. Right. Or right. both, yeah, so or depending both. On, your, on your plan. Right. So the goal of this presentation is to understand that most financial tra transactions have a tax effect. You sell mm -hmm. your house, you sell uh, stocks, income, etc. It's important to consider how taxes will impact your ability to save now and your lifestyle and financial freedom. That Thanks very much for listening and we look forward to seeing you soon.